talk about a couple of answers. If we have to show you on the board because you say, well, wait a minute, then we will, but for now. So lesson one six on page forty-five. And I want to make sure I know what I assigned you, so I'm not giving you one six. So I'll give you one through four. So for question number four. Did you get six fifths? Yes. yes. Good. But then I uh, simplified it. Yes. Yeah, one and one fifth? Mm -hmm. yeah. You're welcome to leave something like that as six over five. I will. Uh, just want to make sure you didn't start looking at the list saying, oh, we have a positive and a negative and it's zero. Just make sure you take the absolute value of each first. And then for, for question number five, what did you get there? Five wasn't assigned. Five was assigned. Oh, I didn't assign five? No. Oh, fair enough. That's great. So when you graphed number eight, if you were going to um, tell me where does the graph cross the y-axis on number eight? Where does it cross the y-axis? X plus five. Does it cross at five or negative five? Negative five on X, negative five positive Y. Hold on. On the Y. Five. So the vertical axis, it crosses at five? Yeah. Yeah. Wait. I don't see your graph. Yeah, that's what I'm missing. Yeah, that's what I'm missing. I have the graph. And then I run right. this on Oh, so it, oh, is that, okay. So then what you should do is you should label that point where it appears to be sitting on the x-axis. Is that negative 5 or 5? Negative 5. So on the x-axis, it's at negative 5. And on the y-axis, it's at positive 5? Positive 5. Yeah, positive 5 on the y-axis and it's at negative 5 on the x-axis. Mm -hmm. So when you add or subtract something to x in a function like that, it makes it slide left and right. Okay. Um, let's see. I did give you a 9. Oh wait, number 12. So it says x is the absolute value equals 15. Yeah, there you go. So wouldn't that just be 15? Yeah. Well, yeah, if the absolute value of x is equal to 15 for question 12. X is equal to you could have x equal to 15. Or x equal to negative 15. Or x equal to negative 15, and that's huge. These problems right here are huge. These are the, these are the most challenging of them. So in this case here, you have two solutions. And whenever we come out of the absolute value bars with what a variable is equal to, we will have two solutions. And we have two solutions because of this, this shape of the graph. You know, the shape of the graph is like a V. So you're, you're going to end up having two numbers that can give you the same output answer. So if I graph this, I graph any absolute value. It looks like this. All right? Anything that has the absolute value gives us this V-shape. So if you were to just look across like that, and this is some value of Y, you're always going to have two different ways to get some X number. So now, so what I'm trying to do here is, let's, let's say I did this. Here's the y-axis, here's the x-axis. So these are values of y, which are outputs, that are right here. And they come from some number down here and some number that's down here. So when we say that the absolute value of a, of a number is equal to 15, we could be looking at this is 15. So to get here, we could get there by using x is equal to positive 15 or x is equal to negative 15. Big concept. 
we use this a lot uh, when when we're working with squaring things and we're working with absolute value. We will end up in this situation where the variable is within the absolute value bars, or if the variable is like a squared, we have two possible solutions. Like this equation here, we're going to see this one. You know, there's two different ways to get a positive 16, for example. Because x could be 4 times 4, or it could be negative 4 times negative 4. So keep that kind of thing in mind. What else did I give you? I gave you all the way through there. How about number 13? W minus 5's absolute value is equal to 0. It would be 5. 5 would Yeah, just 5. Okay. Only 5? Only so, 5 is negative 5 minus 5. Is, yeah, negative 5 plus 5. So, so W minus 5 can be equal to 0 and only equal to 0. The only way to get 0 out of this is if that's equal to 0. So if you solve that, yeah, W is going to be 5, isn't it? So that one only has one solution. And the reason is this little point right here, when it gets graphed, it lands over here at positive 5. So that graph looks like this, being at positive 5. Oops, they're not seeing anything there. Sorry about that. Now you're seeing it. If they're watching it, Trenton might be keeping up on it. What is Trenton? He's phone bothered right now. Trenton. Must be weird. Yeah, Oh, I took my test back and I still like, did you get your test back? No, you got your test back. Yeah. You got your test back? I did a test. How did you do a rapid? Uh, did you get it for it? We talked to, oh, I had an orthodontist appointment. So, I, and they only oh. come every once in a while. So it was like, oh, yeah, we'll just get you a rapid test. Oh, okay. Versus just if you're out sick, you say, I didn't feel well that day, then they go down and then they give you the. The rapid test isn't very really accurate. It's like a 98 or something. Or yeah, 90 something. Or something. I thought it was like 70. About, about 66 percent of accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah some kind of food poisoning or something like that. Really? I think so. Food poisoning. You call it food poisoning. Somewhere. Mm -hmm. Usually it's something else. Biologically, there is no such thing as food poisoning. E. coli. So, um, 20 and 21, um, 21, 21A, ooh, you put 4 in there. I got 12. I got 12. Really? Yes. For 21A? I got 12. Yes. You guys all got 12. Can I scribble it out to your mind? Yeah. Okay, so for number 12, this is a negative, negative x squared plus x times x divided by negative, negative x. And we're evaluating it for 4. So if I rewrite this, I have this. Yes. Okay, so what's in the parentheses here? What does this equal? Uh, 16. Well, the 4 times the 4 is the 16, but by order of operations, you square the 4 first, and then you use the negative. So you ignore that because exponents come first. So now you have this. That's what's in the parentheses. So this is a critical thing. That is negative 16. 
This is also a negative 16. Yeah, that's normal 16. No, th this, is a, this is also a negative 16. I'm not so concerned with that one, but this is the one that I do want you to be able to see the difference. That is 16. This, by order of operations, means that you take the negative 16, you take it as a negative and square it. This, you square the 4, and then you make your answer negative. Because, see, this here is the same as negative 1 multiplied by 4 squared. I told you before, you should look at negatives as the opposite of. So if I read that, I could read, this is the opposite of 4 squared. So that's a tough one to get straight, but the sooner we get it straight, the easier things will be. So here, that's a negative. So then it's a negative negative 16, plus 4 times yeah, we can do Plus a bunch of stuff 16. here. Yeah, this is 16 divided by negative 4. Now, this is kind of like multiplication. It's like negative 1 times negative 16. So we can rewrite this as 16 plus, and then we can do this division. So 16 divided by negative 4 is, is a negative 4. So then when you do 16 plus a negative 4, you get 12. So that's what you guys were saying. I don't know if you got it that way. Well, yes. Or if you put it in your graphing calculator to get it that way. But you better be able to do it by hand that way. You know, do it by hand and then shove them in the calculator and see. Because there will be plenty of times where you have to use these, kind of these skills or these, these uh, steps. And you'll be doing them with variables, and then a calculator's not going to help you, so you have to understand them with regular old numbers. Okay, so, unless you'd like to ask more, let me give you the quiz. <laughs> yeah, I think you should watch Google Docs. I don't tell you about everything. If I bring cake and ice cream, I'm not going to tell you either. It's going to be on the Google Doc.